the problem, there is a problem, however, which could lead to people being arrested with less likelihood of conviction, and it happened in relation to one operation that I reviewed during 2009. Uh, the police obtain information in some cases at a very early stage. And the information, it may be right and it may be wrong, it comes from intelligence, usually it's partly right, but it can be very alarming. And it can lead them to the conclusion that there may be a real imminent threat, say in one of the great cities of the UK. So given the nature of terrorism, they have to arrest. It's not like a robbery offence where they can watch the robbers carefully until the robbery takes place and sometimes catch them doing the robbery itself. And that's particularly because of the danger of suicide terrorism. Suicide terrorism has shocked Western Europe. It's in the view of Western European lawyers and judges and politicians a completely unacceptable political weapon uh, because it causes so much fear among the public. And I'm afraid we have to be ruthless in rooting out um, suicide terrorism, even if it means making early arrests, um, particularly as that terrorism does not represent the views of 99.9 .9 recurring percent of Muslims in this country who are entirely law-abiding and opposed to the heresy which the suicide bombers are um, pursuing falsely in the name of the Prophet. I think one of the things that worries a lot of people, Lord Carlyle, is that there's, uh, we've seen in France they banned the burqa, now in Britain get politicians urging that it should be banned. So are some of those things coming over the horizon causing you a little bit of consternation? Now? All these issues call, cause me consternation. Although some people have said as independent reviewer I'm less of a human rights enthusiast than I used to be, I would claim that I am a better human rights enthusiast than I was at a time when I had not seen the sort of intelligence material that I now do see from time to time. Um, and you know, I think that it is very important for someone who has that special knowledge to make judgments and give advice on these issues. I don't mind if people don't follow my advice as independent reviewer. Well, I do a little. Um, but you know, I, what is most important to me is giving the advice from a position of what I hope is decent knowledge. I am concerned about some of the proposals that have been made. For example, I think that banning the burqa in Britain would be quite wrong. Um, there are many women in many towns and cities in Britain who wear the burqa and they're no less British for it. Yep. What I do think is important is that people of all creeds, all religions and none, secular people too, should be able to operate in an atmosphere of tolerance with a balanced, not absolutist, human rights legal framework. You obviously, as an experienced politician and, and a more experienced lawyer, you, you look at the legal side of things, but you obviously go out and about and see how the law is being applied. Many people are concerned about what's going on at, say, at airport controls, how intrusive they are. Some people of particular faith find it particularly intrusive. Yeah. Is that an issue that would come within your remit to have a look at how it's being applied? Yes, the way in which searches are carried out at airports is within my remit, and I look at it with care. Um, I think technology can help us a lot here. You know, I fly a great deal, mostly within the United Kingdom actually, but whenever I go to an airport I have to take out off my shoes, take my, take my, put my top clothes off, you know, and take my laptop out of the bag and so on. And like all of us, I never quite prepare myself to make it as unintrusive an experience as possible. Now, I do think that full body scanners really do have their problems. I don't think the technology is yet there mm -hmm. for it to be seen as um, non-intrusive and to remain legitimate. But I do think that technology can serve us better than some of the rather slow processes we have. Yeah. A great deal of work is going into improving the technology. But at the end of the day, we have to deal with the evidence, I'm afraid, and the evidence is that some very serious attempts have been made to blow up aeroplanes in flight, quite apart from the successful ventures that gave rise to 9-11. And so we have to do whatever is necessary to protect aircraft from shoe bombers and pants bombers and 
any other form of suicide. But you, you, you will know from your experience, both as a politician and a lawyer, and, and now as someone who's reviewing legislation on, on the, the public's behalf, that a lot of the issues are perception, and, and young people in particular have a, a more hostile perception about stop and search and or, or the sort mm. of general believed uh, vindictiveness that they, they think the forces of the state have. Do you think that's getting worse? I mean, you've tried to open up what you do with community meetings and ha urging people to send you your views. Do you, do you feel that people are now, now accept what's going on, or is there still a growing hostility? I think that people are accepting much more than the media would sometimes have us believe what's going on. And I have many anecdotes from my contact with members of the public to that effect. Um, I think the most important perception that the public want is that they're safe. Yeah. Um, I think the perception that the police or some other agency are being unfair is not a good one, and we should avoid it in every way possible. But if we don't start with the perception that I am safe, that my children and grandchildren are safe when they get on a bus to go to school, that aeroplanes are safe. If we don't have that perception of safety first, then we're going to land ourselves in a much more repressive situation than we have now. And that I would be very opposed to. And obviously, Lord Carlisle, you're reporting to the Home Secretary and dealing with parliamentary committees, but how does the general public get a view across? If they have an experience or a view on the legislation, how do people express a view to you? As you say, well, many people have. Well, they simply send but, uh, an email to carlisleA at parliament.uk. That's Carlisle without an S. Yeah. You can put it on the screen if you want. <laughs> and they express their views to me, or they can write to me at the House of Lords, London SW1. And um, I, I will respond, and I certainly reflect in my reports the representations I have from members of the public. Um, as long as they're expressed moderately and rationally, I never... And not at great length, I, presumably. Like, like, like you, I've been a member of the House of Commons. I never, res I never pay any attention to anonymous letters, no. because I think people have no business to write anonymously, and I never respond to abusive letters. And finally, finally, you've been very generous at the time. I think people would be fascinated to sort of see a, a bit of the man behind the background of the job. I recall, Lord Carlyle, you were also at the front of human rights campaigns at your time in Parliament. You introduced many private members' legislation on, on this. Does your experience doing all this reviewing and all the secret intelligence you've had access to, does it uh, make you more concerned about the future? Or does it make you slightly more optimistic that, in fact, people actually do have a handle on what's going I'll on? I'll tell you what I've learned from being an independent reviewer. And this is a lesson we very, very rarely tell people, I'm going to tell you now, that in any country like ours, there's a large number of very hard-working, very decent people who are in the public service. They're not necessarily well paid. They may be clerks in the Home Office or managers in the Home Office. They may be border guards. They may be police officers or police um, assistants and they are all working very hard to keep the country safe. And I have yet to meet any of them who want to run a police state. Yeah. The last thing they want is to be accused of running a police state. So I think the first thing we should do is recognize the role played by the public service because they are the real defenders of people's liberties in this country. I mean, we lawyers pontificate endlessly about um, principles of civil liberties and human rights. But actually, I think we should listen to the public just a teeny bit more. That's a good point to end on. Lord Carlisle, Alex Carlisle, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you.